Hey everyone, happy 2019 and welcome back to Uno Dose of Trace. This week, we have a mystery for you and it was brought to us by Vanessa Hill. Hi friend, how are Hello. you? Hello, how are you? Good, good. You were saying a little bit ago that you wanted me to cover something, so I thought I would call you so you could tell me. Oh, well thank you. Um, I forget when, it, when this was, so you can fill us in. But uh, last year I became obsessed with these stories in the New York Times about microwave weapons. And I don't know, it was something about the fact that you could wage warfare through the air, like not with chemicals really, not with any kind of like biological weapon, and just with light or sound waves or just some kind of yeah. warfare. It's like really stuck with me. I found it fascinating. Yeah, I looked into it a little bit. Yeah. I, I'm going to be the first comment. Okay, I'll pin it. <laughs> I'll pin it. <laughs> Okay, I'm on it. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. The Havana Embassy mystery is one of the most fascinating and strange things that I can think of happening in quite a while. So, science is on the case to try and figure out what exactly happened, and Uno Dose of Trace is here to ask, is this real? So to get a better understanding, let's dig into the science, shall we? And for that, we need to go all the way back to 2016. Ah, okay. Got it, I think we're here, 2016. Remember this? This morning, new questions about just what happened in Cuba. This bizarre, deepening international mystery. Officials at the highest level of the Cuban government say Cuba is not behind these incidents or these attacks. Some of his sources have been deeply frustrated that they felt that these uh, initial symptoms, these initial health issues weren't dealt with quickly enough uh, or dealt with seriously enough. Okay, put simply, some kind of suspected attack was perpetrated against 24 U.S. Embassy workers in Cuba. The people there experienced impaired cognitive functioning and mood changes, plus physical symptoms and problems with memory, concentration, balance, eyesight, hearing, sleeping, and headaches. This was in their homes and hotel rooms, plus at the embassy, and it lasted for months before some of the staff was removed. Once they were examined back in the States, specialists felt the trauma was, quote, from a non-natural source, but they didn't know anything else about it. Ooh, okay, that's it. Let's go back to 2019. This goatee is killing me. Basically, U.S. Embassy workers in Cuba now have brain damage because of what might have been a sound or electromagnetic weapon or microwaves or maybe just a really loud cricket. Please don't focus on that last one. I'll tell you why in a minute. Right up top, I want to say I feel for these U.S. Embassy workers. This is serious stuff. They're out there serving their country and they now have brain damage for the rest of their life. At first they thought it might have been a sound-based attack because many of the victims reported hearing weird sounds, high-pitched, scratchy things. Extreme sounds have been used as weapons in crowd disbursement for a long time. But that theory was pushed out of the way faster than a Montenegro PM because the damage wasn't to the ears but to the brain. And some embassy employees, they didn't hear anything at all. The prevailing theory next would be microwaves, though even that has some skeptics. Microwaves were discovered by Heinrich Hertz in 1888, but they weren't actually put to work until World War II. A researcher named Percy Spencer, who I'm just realizing has two first names, weird, was messing with them in the lab and he ended up melting a candy bar that was in his pocket. I bet you he was like, Eureka! Ew, whoa, you know, cause chocolate in your pie. Now you had to wash everything and it's 1888. So you can't just like, you know, get an app to do it for you. You gotta like go and, you know. About it. Microwaves use a magnetron, an electromagnetic device, to excite electrons so that they vibrate. Heat, as we experience it, is really just vibrating atoms. They're really excited! So, using this non-ionizing radiation in your microwave, it excites the electrons, that heats the things, and that basically is what got me through college. You know, Easy Mac, microwave hot dogs, plus hot sauce. You know, cut up the hot dogs. Just, I'm disgusting, I know. The thing is, while it's great for heating up coffee or leftovers, it can also be used, potentially, as a weapon, which is what some scientists think might have happened at the embassy in Cuba. The thing is, other scientists think it might be crazy sounds or attacks that are specifically perpetrated in some way that we don't understand. The Journal of the American Medical Association wrote up the testing the embassiers went under. It was comprehensive evaluation of the peripheral vestibular system, audiology evaluations, balance function testing, lots of MRIs, ocular motor function testing, and I could go on, but honestly, I understand very little of what all of these tests do. The point is, 
Even though they said that the study had limitations because of security reasons, they say, quote, that these individuals appear to have sustained injury to widespread brain networks without an associated history of trauma to the head. They also noted that it was mostly affecting their white matter, which is a pretty important part of the brain. There was a specialist at Georgetown the government consulted that felt it could be electromagnetic radio pulses that the ears perceived somehow, but didn't necessarily hear. The human head is allegedly the right size and shape to pick up microwaves, I guess. In the 1970s, Alan Frey, not House Frey, thank goodness, found incredibly that microwaves could be perceptible to the ears as well, fitting with the sound part of this mystery. It has to do with how our brain's auditory processing works. Allegedly, when microwaves hit the temporal lobes, they activate the auditory cortex even in deaf people. Amazing, right? The thing is, that would mean that these sounds are illusions. They're not real. They're caused only by electromagnetic radiation inside the brain. Yet the AP, they went to Cuba and they recorded this clip of the offending sound. Plus, there's no known microwave device that could do this. So, not sounds and not microwaves which is just frustrating. Actually, it's super frustrating, and I'm not even doing the science here, right? I did find this awesome YouTube video and paper about signal interactions that also claims to have a foothold in this mystery. Signals from listening devices and sonic equipment, even when inaudible, are still there flying around, right? Either above or below the level that humans can hear. Usually it's ultrasound. And this paper postulates that multiple ultrasonic signals could interact and boost each other, creating sounds that neither were able to make alone. To prove it, they did this in a lab, and it does sound a lot like that Associated Press sound. And it wouldn't be a surprise to me that the United States Embassy in Cuba would be filled with lots of listening devices and microphones and antennas and broadcasting systems and so on. If, say, a jammer and transmitter were placed in the same room and the signals got intermodulated, it could make a sound, according to this research, that caused pain. There are so many Wi-Fi and wireless signals blowing around out here, and if there are enough of them in one place, they can intermodulate. This could have happened accidentally, and maybe with prolonged exposure could cause damage. Maybe. More research is needed, for sure. Before we wrap up, stupidly, some scientists in a non-peer-reviewed, unpublished paper blamed a specific cricket, a very high-pitched cricket, apparently. Now, I'm not sure why crickets would affect only embassy workers at their homes, hotels, and in the embassy itself, and not, you know, the people of Cuba, but that's what this paper postulated. When asked about it, the researchers said that they couldn't rule out an attack, but their paper was just looking at how similar the sound was to crickets. Stay in your lane, guys. I appreciate it. Stay in your lane. In the end, this is a good old fashioned Cold War mystery, right? The symptoms aren't consistent, the cause isn't known, they can't find any of the devices that might be causing something like this, and even the doctors examining the people were confused. Is this real? Yeah, it really is. But is it quantifiable and understandable? Not at all. Science is confused and confounded, and maybe we'll never know what really happened. Special thanks to Vanessa Hill of Braincraft for suggesting this topic to me. Super interesting. If you have an idea for a video, let me know on Twitter. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. One last thing. If this video made you go, huh, consider clicking that subscribe button down there. And if this wasn't the first time you did that, consider sharing the video or joining the nerd fam. We'd love to have you. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Trace, and I'll see you next week.